Hi, my name is Sylvia McNichol and I love reading mysteries. When I was judging for the Arthur Ellis Crime Writing Awards, I had to read over 70 mysteries in two months. I was reminded about how much you learn about writing from reading. What I learned is that mysteries don't have to be about murders. There doesn't have to be a body on the first page. So much so that when I wrote The Great Mistake Mysteries and Body Swap, I created more of a puzzle to be solved by the main character and the reader. In any story, mystery, or puzzle, there are three main elements. There's the plot, the setting, and the character. The plot is the what and how. In a mystery, there's always going to be a puzzle to be solved and the writer knows that the driving force or narrative hook will be that puzzle and the ending is always going to offer the solution. So what I would suggest to you mystery writers out there is that you begin with an ending in mind and I'm going to give you a writing prompt. This is what your villain might say. I never meant to hurt anyone. The setting is the where and the mood for your story. It can be a planet light years away, a medieval castle, or your neighborhood, like in The Great Mistake Mysteries, or a carnival in the sky, like in Body Swap. The character is the who and why, and the who is way more exciting if they're not a police officer or detective, because then the situation is unique to them. Also, they may not want to solve the crime. The why. The why is the driving force, the stakes that you give them to compel your main character to solve the crime. It could be that they will be blamed or perhaps someone they love will be harmed. The characters also involve the suspects and the villains, the who and why of your mystery. You need at least three strong suspects for your puzzle and each of them have a why, the compelling reason that makes them commit the crime or the motive. The difference is the villain will have a deep, dark secret that they will reveal at the end. First thing you need is names for your characters. Choose ones that mean something to you, your friends, cousins, sports car, or an actor. Look up their meanings on the internet. The next thing you need to do is think about the outside of your character. Give them some interesting details. A tattoo, a scar, a limp, two different colored eyes. These could all be clues in your puzzle. Think even harder about what's on the inside of your character. Something about their friends and family, but more importantly, what do they want in each part of the story? And what are the difficulties they need to overcome to get it? The harder they need to work to get what they want, the stronger the story. In Body Swap, Halle is my main character. I was thinking of a younger Halle Berry. Her father is Scottish, her mother is Jamaican, she's got a sister. She loves her family. When she grows up, she wants to have a family too. But right now in the beginning of this book, she wants to know if Kale likes her and she really wants to have Kale as a boyfriend. Susan, I wanted it to be an old timey name. Did you know that in 1955, there were 47,000 babies named Susan? But my mom had a best friend who was a very active senior driving around, traveling, and her name was Susan, so I patterned Susan after her. What Susan wants most is to be closer to her family, and mostly she wants to avoid going into a long-term care facility. Eli is short form for my God in Hebrew. My Eli is a shapeshifter, and in the beginning he's an old man, then he's a carnival operator, then he's an Asian waitress, and then he is a Chinese crested dog. And do you notice that dog spelled backwards is God. What Eli wants most is for Hallie to put down her cell phone. He also wants Hallie and Susan to get along and work together. Saji Motors is a what that actually becomes a character. In Body Swap, Susan and Hallie exchange bodies in a car accident. And Saji Motors is a villain that knows the deep dark secret which could stop these accidents from occurring. 
As the story progresses, the main character should become more desperate to solve the crime. Perhaps there's a time crunch or the crime reoccurs. In the beginning, Hallie blames the whole accident on Susan, so she doesn't care to get involved in solving the puzzle. Then she realizes unless she pursues a different solution, she will not get her old body back. The time crunch is Christmas. She wants to be home by Christmas. And then another fatal car accident happens, which really pushes her and Susan to solve the crime. As the mystery draws to its conclusion, the suspects become more suspicious. The villain will finally reveal their deep, dark truth. The hero will find the solution and grow as a result of realizing which of their assumptions were wrong. I hope you read and write a lot of mysteries and that you've enjoyed today's writing mystery workshop.